I'm kind of pumped. Today, my friend The Living is coming over to record an unplugged version of his song, Two Trips Around the Sun. Let's see how we do it. So today is part one of a three-part series. We're gonna record a simple song. Part one today, we're gonna to start recording and I'm gonna jump in every now and then and just highlight a few of the points so that you can understand what we're thinking about as we go through. If you think something like that sounds kind of cool, please hit the subscribe button. Here we go. First thing we've got to do is figure out what we're doing, what our goal is. You mentioned it will be the same arrangement that we do on the live show. In this case, we're referencing to a live recording and we're going to try and recapture sort of the essence of that. We're not going to pretend that it's a live recording, but we're going to recapture that as our unplugged version. I love this version of this song. Number two, what we're doing here is we're mapping out the song form so that we know what we're doing. We're not just gonna start recording and randomly figure it out. We're gonna make a plan. That way we know what we need to record. Yeah. Short roadmap and then pre-chorus, back to the ooze. Like re-intro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then second verse. There's a stop in the second verse too. Yeah, and then pre-chorus, chorus, ooze again. Step three, we've got to decide on the tempo and the feel of the song. So that once we start, it feels right and we don't have to adjust stuff after the fact because time compressing or expanding audio, yes, it can be done, but it's always nice if you just nail it the first time. So now that we've got some rhythm stuff down, we're gonna record harmonic information next. In this case, that means the guitar. The reason why we're doing that is we're making a musical framework so that when it's the singer's turn, there's something that feels like music and it's a bit more inspiring to sing on. All right. So Anthony, how often do you tune? Every chance I get. Number five, we're gonna record the vocal. We've got a nice setting for it, you can feel it. A uh, little bit about level. We're aiming for a level between minus 10 and minus six. That way we've got enough room that if he gets a bit loud, we're not gonna distort. And it's loud enough that we're not gonna have any noise problems or distortion problems. In digital, you can't get distortion problems if you're recording too low. So for the living, we're gonna record him on a Perlman TM1. He's gonna go into this 1073 into that purple audio 1176. Let's try it one more time, just a little under. What we're trying to do here is impart just a little bit of flavor on it and just control it a little bit so it feels a little bit even. The 1176 does something to the vocal, it's a bit grainy and zingy, but it creates a bit of a vibe that helps the vocal move up front a little bit. But somehow, you can't seem to meet up. You don't have to tell me that this love is gone, cause I already know. Dude, that felt good. Let's, let's do that one more time. Man. Yeah. All right. You got your life and I got mine. We ran across every life. Okay, so those guys are gone now, man. They're both so good. So what I've got to do now, rifle through this and make sure that there's no funny edits. The other thing that I've done is I've gone to the ends of these and made sure there's no clicks at the end of them. I don't usually put fades on things unless it really needs it. So what I'm going to do now is make a recording of where we're at. Okay, we finished recording. We've got guitar, vocals, Cahoon. I've done all the editing. I'm gonna bounce them all out into separate files and move them into Pro Tools. Next part I'm gonna show you next week is the mix process and how I approach that. If you got any questions or comments, leave them below. It'd be awesome to hear what you think. See you next time.